Alright, before I conclude the move tool tutorials, I'll need to touch on an object's appearance first. When I say object appearance, I'm referring to an object's fill color, stroke color, stroke weight, and opacity. These are fundamental properties you will need to know moving forward, especially if you want to master the magic wand tool. To start with, let's get the rectangle tool and drag a shape out. Next, I want to turn your attention to the properties panel. The properties panel is very useful to have open in Illustrator, as it's your one-stop spot for several options you're gonna need in it. What's in it will change depending on what you're using, or what you're selecting. But for now, we're focusing on the basics, and I need you to focus on this appearance section. Going in order, Fill determines what the insides of your paths will be colored with, Stroke determines the thickness of a path's outline, as well as its color, and the opacity refers to how transparent the whole object is. You can change the color for the fill by clicking on this small box here and choosing from one of the swatches. Alternatively, you can go up to this colors panel above the properties panel and select from this rainbow of colors. You can play with these sliders to change the value around as well. If you want even more precision in your colors, you can double click on the fill swatch right here to open a color picker window. All this applies to changing your stroke color as well. Just make sure your stroke swatch is active by clicking on it first. You can quickly switch between whether the stroke or fill color is active by hitting X on your keyboard. You can also swap the colors of your stroke and fill color by holding shift and then hitting X. If you ever want to revert your colors back to the default white fill black stroke, all you need to do is click this tiny button here or hit D on your keyboard. Finally, if you want to remove the color from your filler stroke, click this red slash or hit backslash on your keyboard. You might notice the color swatches on the left hand side have a third option nested in the middle of these three. That will give your object a gradient, but this is an advanced option I'll go over in detail another time. Getting off color for a second, changing the size of your object's stroke is very simple. You can click this arrow for a drop down menu of preset sizes. You can also manually tick it up or down with these arrows. Or manually input it. By clicking on the word stroke that's underlined, you can access a menu of advanced options that we'll be going over another time. Changing the opacity or transparency of your object is very simple as well. Just click this arrow and move the slider around. Or you can manually input the value yourself. By clicking on the word stroke that's underlined, you can access a menu of advanced options that we'll be going over another time. For now, just remember that you can change an object's blending mode under this menu labeled normal. These options affect an object's transparency by having the color effect what's underneath it in a variety of ways. I'll go over exactly how they work in another video. You'll find these options to adjust an object's color, stroke weight, or opacity littered all over the program. Where you go to change it doesn't matter, it all just comes down to preference. Once you've got an understanding of how these options work, I'll see you over in the Magic Wand Tool video.